Hello and welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. In this video, we're going to be taking a close look at the different automation modes available to us in Reaper on every single track or the entire project globally. So we're just going to be focusing on this guitar bus track and let's zoom in here a little bit. So on this track, we see this button. It's a little three points with a line between. This is our envelope or envelope, if you want to call it that, uh, enable button. And then we have the current automation mode. So it's set to trim, actually trim read. If we click this button with a left click, it brings up this menu, which gives us all the available parameters that we can automate. Quickly, what is automation? Automation is anything in the project that we want to change from one point to another, be an instantaneous change or over time. There are different ways we can do that. We can do it with drawing it in with a mouse. We can do it by moving a control in the software with the mouse. We can do it by moving a control on an external control surface or a MIDI controller. And then there are different automation modes that behave differently and respond to your input in different ways. So an example of something that we can automate is the track volume. So we can click on this to enable that. It will show the track envelope lane. And this has controls for manipulating the automation on this lane. An example of this would be to go from the default value of 0 dB down to minus 6 in the verse, and then bring it back up to the original value a little bit later. In trim read mode, this envelope lane augments whatever that control was at. So if we're talking about volume, if this track is at is at minus 1.7 right now, but if we bump this up by 2 dB, let's just go like that, like plus 2. So now this is minus 1.7 plus 2.16. In trim read mode, these are relative values, not absolute values. So when we have our envelope panel opened up on the track, we have various different buttons and things. So we have this arm for recording button, and that when we're in specific modes, this will tell Reaper which automation controls that we're adjusting to actually record. There are times when we need to adjust something that already has automation written. We don't want to overwrite that because the automation mode is for the entire track. Let's say we're adjusting an EQ and the track volume, but we only want to write the EQ. That's when you would use this button. Uh, beside that, it says what the actual automation is going to. So volume, if we open up a plugin, so frequency low shelf, and we see that there. We can hide, show and hide that as needed. Then we have a trim knob. When we don't have a selection, it will scale the entire envelope up and down. If we have a time selection, that will just do the time selection. And that's a really great quick way of working. Uh, if you don't want to record the automation in real time, just selection-based, it works really, really well. So I'm going to hit undo a couple times to bring it back to default. If there's nothing written on this envelope, we click this button, it's like a power button, it will uh, clear the envelope, it will take it away. So let's bring up the envelope again. We can um, command drag or control drag on the PC to draw in envelope points as we move the mouse. If we click this, it will just bypass it, so it will not read that information. But if we have it on, then the track fader will follow, or the track volume will follow this move. The thing with trim read automation is that it doesn't show the parameters moving, or at least not for volume, which is the most common parameter that you're going to be using trim read mode for. So if we look at the track fader here, the volume knob on this track, you're not going to see it move as it plays back. So the automation is there. We're hearing the volume change. It's going up a little bit, it's going down a little bit. Let's just make this more extreme so we can be sure that that is actually reading the automation. Right? So it's reading the automation, but it's not showing us either on the track control panel volume 
or in the mixer. We look at the mixer for that selected track that was for this uh, guitar bus track. We see it disappear. It's not showing the fader moving. So to change that, we need to be in the read mode, not trim read. But before we go into that other automation mode, let's have one more look at uh, what's on the automation panel, and that's hide envelope, move to media lane, and clear envelope. So if we want to delete all the automation on this lane, we can click on that. It will ask us to confirm, and we'll say yes, and then it will remove that envelope as well. We can do that again quickly, draw something in. We can move to media lane, and that will move it up to the actual track lane. And if there was audio there, it would just be overlapping. Um, if we want to bring that back, uh, you right click on the envelope and show envelope in lane. And we'll bring it back to the bottom and we can uh, hide the envelope, which will keep it active, but just not show us it. So we go back into our automation panel. To bring it back, we just click on visible. If we left click that button that I showed you, it brings up this panel, but we can right click it and we have a simplified list of options here. And if we look at the track automation modes, it actually gives us a little description of each type. So in trim read, envelopes are active, but faders are all for trim, which means again, that's augmenting whatever is, uh, whatever the original parameter was. So whatever you set, the fader two, let's say minus six, and then you have your envelope at plus six, it's going to come to zero. So that's just a really simplified example of, of that. It's really easy once you start working with it. As a default automation mode, it may be a little confusing. Next, there is the read mode, which plays faders with armed envelopes. And in read mode, you can't make changes. So read mode is when you're finished automation and you want it to just play it back and you don't want any other changes to happen, then that's the mode for you. So uh, let's go into read mode. So right click, choose read mode. This knob here, it's turned green to show that it has read mode automation on. We don't see any other parameters with green highlighted because this is the only one that's there. We can bypass this envelope and then it comes out of read mode. If we try to use the trim knob on the envelope, that doesn't work. Because the automation is all already written there, is now going to use that as the track volume. We can still draw in the automation with the mouse just by command dragging to freehand draw that. If I move a hardware control surface, it's just going to snap back to the written value here. And we can also see on the, the volume knob on the track or in the mixer, we can see it's moved down. So let's play that back and we can see what happens in read mode. So I think that mode is pretty easy to understand. After you've written automation in any of the modes, you put it to read mode, and then you're not making any other changes, either accidentally or um, on purpose. Uh, and then you move on to the next task. It also moves your external control surface to match the changes that you've written on the track. So let's clear this automation. And just a quick tip, you can double click on the track envelope to select all the points and just hit delete and that will clear the envelope without hiding the envelope unlike this option here clear envelope okay so let's go into touch mode and this is a mode for real-time manipulation of envelopes and to use this with a external control surface you need touch sensitive faders or encoders to do this and actually every parameter in every plugin um, is now in automation ready mode. So it's waiting for an input from us. And as soon as we touch any parameter on a plugin or the track fader or any of the track um, controls, it will then start writing automation for that. If I just touch on the gain knob here, it's going to bring up the automation envelope for this track now. And, and it's written in a point already. Uh, we're not in a playback mode yet. We can actually write automation 
in touch mode without starting playback. So I can change this and it's going to, um, it's going to begin writing the current value to that point. And because there are no other points further on in the track, it's just going to ramp and have a flat line between. So I can move the cursor, make another point, and it's going to make a, a change like that. And I can grab the peak reduction knob. That's going to bring up another envelope here. And it's just going to start writing. Let's delete those envelope points and let's start playing the song and just adjusting these things as an example of what uh, touch mode actually does. And I think this is where it's most useful. This is the major difference between touch mode and latch mode, which is coming up. So in touch mode, as soon as we let go of the parameter, as soon as we let go of this knob, the peak reduction knob, it's going to jump back to the previously written automation or uh, control level. And you can see that happening as soon as I let go of the knob, it was jumping back to the previous level that was there. So this is a good mode if you want to make quick changes to something as it's playing back. Often people will use a little control surface with a single fader that's touch sensitive. And as the vocal plays back, they're just touching and giving small changes to the, uh, to the vocal level or send levels and things like that. As the track plays back, it's just jumping between the default value and where their uh, fader is. Just by touching the fader uh, with a fingertip, it's writing in automation. It's pretty neat. Before we get much further into this, we should probably look at automation settings. And so let's open up the preferences and go to editing behavior and automation. Automation return speed is, is the time that it takes for our, the touched envelope to return back to its default value or the previous value um, when you are recording. This point is where I let go of the parameter uh, it returns back to its default value, and then five milliseconds later, it ends the um, the automation recording. So it doesn't draw in points uh, that are not changing. Action transition time is what you use when you're uh, triggering automation write commands, such as write from current position to start, write from current position to end, write current value to time selection. These things are really useful when you are in latch preview mode, and we'll get to that in a bit. Then there are these other options, automatically add envelopes when tweaking parameters in automation write modes. Makes sense. Display read automation feedback from hidden envelopes. Let's say you hide your volume envelope, uh, but you want to see it happening. Makes sense to keep this turned on. Allow writing automation to hidden envelopes. This is great if you want to hide all those envelope lanes and keep writing automation without having to show them, uh, without having to see it actually happening. Reduce envelope point data when recording or drawing automation. That's just going to put in the minimum amount of automation points that are needed as you're writing. When recording automation and stopped, there are three different options here. Add additional point before edit position. Do not add additional points. Add points before and after edit position. This is really personal preference. I like do not add additional points. I find that that works for me, but please give this a try and see what um, you like the best. When adding envelope or pan envelopes, apply trim to envelope and reset trim. I have this set to never. I don't remember what the default value is, but you can have it set so that when you adjust the trim knob on the track envelope, it will apply that to the volume and then reset. I find that kind of weird, but um, so that's why I have it set to never. After recording automation in write mode, on repeat or seek or stop, switch to trim read mode. You can have this set to remain in write mode, switch to touch mode, switch to latch mode, or switch to read mode. And for me, either this one or switch to read mode makes the most sense. And then reset latch state when looping. I have that turned off because often I am working in latch preview mode and as the, the song section loops around, I'm still automating. I, I might be automating all the tracks at once as it loops around a few times. I'm changing EQ, I'm changing volume, I'm changing panning, track width, compression settings, all these things. I want to keep those active, but they're only writing 
when I'm moving them. So reset latch state. Uh, essentially, that's that's this button here. So and when you're in a, a, a latch mode, you can have that set to turn off after you've written something or not. So those are my automation preferences that I use. Um, this action transition time, I have it set to uh, 500 milliseconds when I'm editing videos, and I usually have it set to like 25, maybe 100 milliseconds when I'm mixing music. So let's, let's actually change that to 25 milliseconds. Click apply and okay, and we can close that. So we looked at trim read, and we looked at read, and we looked at touch mode. Next, let's look at latch mode, which records fader movements after first movement. Okay, so this track is in latch mode, and let's see what happens when we move the uh, the trim knob or the track fader while playback is stopped. Let's see what happens. I move the track fader. It has not created any additional points before or after this point that I'm moving, um, but it is ramping from the previous value there. So if we move the cursor again, um, and notice that this is red, that means that the, tr the envelope is latched. That means that it's going to continue writing that value. Move the cursor. And it's just ramping between these values. So let's switch over to the mixer view. And let's look at what happens when we play back. There is automation written on this track, and we are in latch mode. So let's just see what happens here. And at any point, we can grab this fader and start writing as well. All right, and we switch back to the arrange view, and there you can see all the envelope points as I was dragging that fader around. So it's still in latch mode. We're going to hit play again, and I'm going to grab the, the track fader and start drawing automation. <laughs> And it's just moved over that, that previous position there. If we delete this envelope point and move the cursor to a place where there's, so there's no more automation points ahead of it, let's see what happens then. There it's, it's kept the previous automation uh, level. So that's something that this setting will affect. So experiment with that and see what you prefer. That setting also depends on this here. So if we change this to uh, 500 milliseconds, so let's, let's see what happens there. We are in latch mode and we're going to hit play and we're going to move the fader. So now we have this 500 milliseconds to return to the previous value instead of five milliseconds. So this is five milliseconds here, and this is 500. Let's set that back to five. So now let's look at latch preview mode. So latch preview mode will read back any uh, envelopes that are not latched. So currently these are yellow, they're armed for recording, but they are not latched. They're not turned, they have not turned red. So if we hit play here, it's going to play back this volume change here. Right? Makes sense. But let's just go in here and loop this a couple times. And grab the fader. So let's say we want it at that automation level now. We need to use an action. So quickly bring up the action list. I have this, I have an action I've signed to the letter L, write current values for actively writing envelopes to time selection. This knob is red, that means it's actively writing. You know what, let's bring up that, let's bring up that compressor and also adjust the gain. Right there. So we can hear that change, but we don't see it written until we hit this button. Automation, write current values to time selection. There are other ones here. Right to start, right to end, things like that. I'm gonna set that. I'm going to run that. 
And there we go. It's made that 25 millisecond transition time between points here and here, here and here, beginning and end of the time selection. And we can also change our time selection, move our cursor, and run that action again. And I have that set to the letter L. It can keep writing it as long as these envelopes are latched. So let's say uh, this section here, but I'm going to unlatch the compressor by just clicking this. Now this is unlatched, it's grayed out. And if I hit the letter L to write my current value to the active envelopes at the time selection, it's only going to do this one uh, track envelope. I hope that makes sense. It's really quick to work with uh, once you're used to it. So for example, I can select all this, click that. So this is my value that I want and press L and it's made a flat change all the way through there. I can make this track fader. Let's go to plus 9.3, press L and it jumps up. Or I can set that to the entire envelope. I can set it to just the time selection. So we need to make a change before it'll work in the time selection. Actually, let's go here and go to the start of the project. And there we go. So this is super flexible, but it does rely on combination of time selections, moving the parameters, and then committing the automation with the action list. So as I said, this is something that is really fast once you are used to it. And I have a video on automating a song with Latch Preview Mode, so I encourage you to check that out for a little more in-depth explanation of that. Finally, we have Write Mode. And this will write the fader positions or any parameters as the song plays back. And the key here is that unlike Latch Mode or Touch Mode, it's not going to read what's on the track as it plays back. All the automation envelopes are automatically armed. The red here, as soon as I hit play, it's going to start writing. So these gain changes here on this knob is not going to read that back. It's going to overwrite it. It's just flattened it out. We can move things as well. Now remember that preference? Um, it's gone back to trim read mode. So we just need to set that to write and let's move this gain knob uh, and some other things as it's playing back. All right, so the difference there between latch mode and write mode, in write mode, it's going to just stay in write mode uh, and, until you stop playback. With latch mode, it's going to wait a certain amount of time and then um, go back into reading the automation that's there. And in touch mode, it, touch mode is much quicker, and it's just going to um, it's going to stop inputting automation as soon as you let go of the controller. So write mode, if there's stuff on the track already, it's going to overwrite it. That's why you need to be a little bit careful with that uh, automation mode, and that's why it jumps back to trim read mode or read mode as soon as you hit stop or as soon as the uh, cycle loops around. And that is a quick explanation of the automation modes in Reaper. Reaper is a fantastic DAW when it comes to automation. You can automate anything and everything, and there's so many different ways to do it. There's no one way that you're always going to be working with automation. It's good to know a bunch of different ways to do things. So I hope you've learned something. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog with Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.